All right, let's talk about the cropping of photographs. Um, most drawing programs, uh, this one happens to be Corel Draw. As uh, if you've watched uh, some of my other videos, you might know that I don't like to show my toolbar because if you're using something other than the program I use, Corel Draw, uh, let's say you use Adobe Illustrator or, or the free program Inkscape, which is excellent. Um, you're going to find the toolbars are, look different, they have different names, and, you, and the video won't uh, be as beneficial. So that's why I don't show my to toolbars, just my workspace. And um, if you want to crop a photograph, every program has a crop tool, which you've probably used before, and it's easy to use. You just kind of get it the way you want it to look. You can adjust it to a specific size, and then double click it, and your photograph is cropped um, and that's useful um, but what if you have uh, a bunch of stuff like this and your project uh, requires you to crop all photos to a, a specific size I mean, it's for a, I don't know a high school yearbook or something here's a technique that I use often and I think you're gonna find this useful if you draw a let's say we're using a square we don't always have to use a square because I'm gonna show you a, something interesting after we're familiar with the technique let's say you draw a square similar to what we did with the crop tool and um, we can make this square to an exact size the same as we can with crop let's draw another square here let's make that square red and then bring that yellow one up to the front now I can do one of two things now that I have these two shapes I can either combine these and once again, that's a curl draw command. It might be called something else in Illustrator. But combining just makes them into one object. Now you can see our dog through the little frame that I've created. Or instead of combine, you can also use your trim tool. Um, once again, that's curl draw. Illustrator, I think it's called Pathfinder Subtract, I believe. Uh, but your trim tool will trim away. the red creating that same window uh, but what I like about the trim tool is uh, I can save this square and we might use that for something later on for now I'll just park it over here now I'm going to select my red frame and now I'm going to trim my JPEG here but the cool thing is I can actually move this exactly where I want it within the frame I can enlarge it if I want a little bit I can reduce it I can get this exactly the way I want it within my frame then when I trim it now we've got a our first uh, photograph cropped then I can bring my other one up here and I might want him a little bit down, a little bit over here. Once again, I can reduce or enlarge him if I want. And uh, if I run out of space here, I might make him a little bit bigger, just so I can keep him in the frame. And then once again, I'm going to trim my JPEG. Now I've got two. Now I'll bring this guy in here. And as you, as you can see, he's going to need to be enlarged. So let us enlarge him. And our, our goal is to make all of these dogs look about the same size. So I'll bring him in here. Bring him down. That's about where I want it and trim it again 
and now we've got him and I'll just do it with these other two now that you see what I'm doing you can see this guy needs to be a lot bigger fortunately the resolution will allow me to do that so I'll just make him about as big as I'd like so he matches the other guys now I'm calling these guys they might be female dogs too I don't know they're not mine okay so trim her I guess and I'll do this last one here and I think you might agree this is easier and uh, faster than using my crop tool on each one of these and it also gives me a lot of flexibility I can see exactly what it's gonna look like because I can keep that frame whereas the crop tool you sort of have to do it right on the photo so I'll just leave him there okay now this has served its purpose I can get rid of it and I can put these wherever I want and they're all exactly the same size I can use my align tool to align them perfectly and now I use my align tool and my distribute tool to get this all lined up exactly the way what I had in mind and you can see how you can use that for many things now here's the reason I saved this square remember I used trim instead of uh, combine because I can use this square for many things I can put it right on top of there and once again I can use a line if I want with this but I want to get as close as I can so I'm not I don't have to align the whole thing again but once I get it just about on there I'll align it with my photograph and then I'll drop it to the back and make it black and I'll give this an outline or a contour whichever you prefer they're not the same thing but they're similar and they can be used for different things but that's a that's for a different video and I'll make this four points to start with see how how I like it and that gives my photograph a perfect outline and once again I can do that with all of these I can just copy this and paste it behind all of these photos now you might be familiar with, uh, at least in CorelDRAW, the power clip feature, um, which will allow you to put a one object inside of another one. And that that's something that you, you may use that already. Um, we might make another video about that. But um, I, I'm a little careful with that, unless it's a it, uh, unless it's a project just for myself and I'm going to be publishing it, I'm going to be working with it maybe to, to print. I'm a t-shirt printer so I might be using this for my own artwork. But if I'm sending it to somewhere else um, for printing or for uh, presentation, I, I'm a little bit worried to use a power clip feature in a file I'm sending elsewhere because I'm not sure it's going to display properly um, on the other end and I'm also not sure you know what software they're going to be using and what um, they might have to do to manipulate it and they might not realize what I've done and they're going to think something's the matter with it I'm, it's just better to keep your files as simple as possible so um, the power clip feature is very useful but in this case I I avoid using it um, so now that we have an outline here I can adjust my outline if I want to as large as I want to make it another thing I can do with this is create a shadow I get rid of my outline and I'll move it out here give it a shadow. I might change that to a gray instead of a black. So as you can see you can get creative with this. Now I'm going to do something I also do quite a bit, a technique that I think you'll like. I'm going to convert this shadow into a uh, bitmap. 
So now this is a grayscale bitmap, um, and that's one thing I do like about Corel Draw. You can work with raster and vector images. Um, in my opinion, more more with more flexibility than you can with with some of the other programs. Um, of course, there is a program that goes with Corel Draw, Corel Photo Paint. If you do it, need to edit your images, usually you'd go to that. But for converting and doing some work with rasters, you can do it right here. Um, now I'm going to blur this bitmap here. I just made it 100 DPI, excuse me, PPI, because I wanted to uh, keep it low resolution for the video. And uh, this is a Gaussian blur. And that's kind of cool. You can adjust the you can adjust the amount of blur by the number of pixels it's going to blur out. And then I can do something else. I can convert this to a monochrome bitmap. And if I do it as line art, and now it's a single color, just black and white. And the cool thing about that is I can train uh, change the white to a transparency and then I can make my shadow whatever color I want once again it's a single color so since it's transparent anything behind it you'll be able to see through the shadow so that's a good effect if you're creating a ping maybe for a I call it a ping, I don't know if that's correct, PNG for a website. Um, that's a good technique to use. Now here's something you're going to like. As I said earlier, you don't have to use a square for your cropping shape. Here's a picture of a cool car. Let's say this is mine. It's not, but let's pretend. And let's say I love my car. So, I'm going to draw a heart, and then I'm going to draw a rectangle. And then once again, I'm going to use my trim tool. To cut a window this out of here for now and then move my car I have to make it a little bit bigger to fit in my heart and this might not be the best example because that doesn't really look that cool but I'm gonna cheat on that a little bit and then I'm going to trim my car into that heart shape. Once again I'll use my align tool to line these up exactly. And then give it an outline or a contour depending on what you prefer or what you might be using it for later. corner off so it doesn't cut it and you can create some pretty cool effects I'll try that blur again this time I'm going to give it a big outline and I'll make that gray again because I'm going to do that same blur effect that I did before and convert it to a low resolution bitmap since I'm just doing this for the little movie and I'm gonna blur my bitmap this time I blurred it quite a bit I should have mentioned this is a grayscale bitmap which is 8-bit and then I'm going to convert it to a 1-bit monochrome bitmap using the line art feature
and then I'm free to make it whatever color I want. So there's a few techniques you can practice with. Um, you can have some fun with this and uh, as you can see this is a useful technique that you can use for a lot of different projects. So practice with this using whatever uh, drawing or editing program you use and uh, I hope your next project goes well.